So it's a quick detour. Um, a very quick high level primer about convex functions. Uh, convexity is a, is a fascinating topic. It has its own, you know, uh, you know, you can do a whole course on convexity, but uh, what we are going to do is only look at the bare essentials which are necessary for our purposes. Um, okay, so what is convexity? Well, con we are go first, let me put down a picture and say what is a convex function. Uh, we want to understand certain types of class of functions which are uh, which are you know very popular in machine learning in general uh, which have a lot of practical applications and one of that set of functions is the convex function um, convex functions have this property right so let's it, it the picture that one can think of is something like this um, where let's say you have two points a and a point we will take it a different point, maybe B. Um, and the corresponding values that this function gives are, let us say, f of A and f of B. Now, what I want to look at is some point here in between, which has value A plus B by 2. And I want to understand how does the function's value at a plus b by 2 look like, right. So, it is it's, the function's value is here, right. So, now this is one value of interest. Um, the other value we look at is, you know, you, you imagine as if the function at this point from a to b was not that convex or not that function that we are looking at, but then like a straight line. Look at the linear interpolation of this. Um, and then you that will give you some value here, right. So, that at, at the point a plus b by 2, you get a value for this modified function, which is like interpolating between a and b linearly, right. So, now what is, well, this is, this value we know is f of, let me write it in green, f of a plus b by 2. What is this value? Can you can guess what this value would be? Well, this is linearly interpolating between f of a and f of b. So, this is sitting exactly bang in the middle of f of a and f of b. So, this is going to be f of a plus f of b divided by 2, halfway from f of a to f of b. Now, from this picture, we see that f of a plus b by 2 is less than or equal to f of a plus f of b divided by 2. Now, if this happens for every a comma b, that the linear interpolation at two points has a strictly higher value than the function itself, then such a function is called a convex function. <coughs> if this happens, then it implies that this function is a convex function. It should happen for every every choice of a and b. I've just shown two choices of a and b now try to convince yourself that for this curve that you have that I have drawn, you can take any two points and then this property will hold. Um, if, if the other side holds, right, so if the other way holds that if you have a function like this, um, which goes the other way, where the linear interpolation has value strictly less than the function's value, uh, then such a function is called a concave function. Right, so it's our usual convex mirrors and concave mirrors. If you, have, if you remember from your high school physics, um, so that's the that's the idea. Right, so for all a comma b, uh, what should happen in a concave function is f of a plus b by two is greater than or equal to f of a plus f of b by two. If this happens, then we'll call this a concave function. Now, from this, um, an immediate question is, are there functions which are both con convex and concave? Well, if you look at the definition, it says less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, which means that if there is a function where it, the, the inequalities were actually equalities, then it means that it is both convex and concave. But what does it mean to say that the inequality is equality? It means that f of a plus b by 2 equals f of a plus f of b by 2 for all a, b. And what function satisfies that? Well, that means that the function 
is linear right so the input you divide by 2 the output also gets added and divided by 2 right so it means it's a that's the property of a linear function so if you have a linear function well then if you have a function like this then i take any two points and then if i linearly interpolate well of course i'm going to get the same value so this is both uh, concave and convex um, the next question is are there functions which are neither concave nor convex <coughs> well of course there there are functions which are neither concave nor convex can you think of a shape such a function will have um, well i'm just giving you some shape here for a function maybe a function like this right so it's neither concave nor convex because um, you know i can choose two points maybe i'll choose two points here um, where the linear interpolation is below the function value so it can't be convex um, and i'll choose maybe a and b and then i'll choose a, a b and c where the linear interpolation is above the function value between b and c so it can't be convex also so it's neither concave nor convex okay so what we are interested in is convex or concave functions um, and, and uh, one way to think of this is as follows. The definition that I wrote down, I am going to write it in a slightly different way. Um, I wrote a plus b by 2, functions value evaluated at a plus b by 2, I can write it as half times a plus half times b. Right? So now if it is, uh, um, if it is convex, then this is at most half times f of a plus half times f of b. Now it happens that if this holds for every a and b, you can actually argue that this happens for any lambda, lambda times a plus 1 minus lambda times b is less than or equal to lambda times f of a plus 1 minus lambda times f of b where lambda is any value between 0 and 1 right so um, so if if the first if you can argue that a function satisfies the first row first uh, inequality it also should satisfy the second inequality in pictures this just this just says that well uh, i drew the picture earlier so you have this picture like this uh, you have a a and b and now we are saying well, you can also uh, alternatively think of the definition of a convex function as, you know, I can take any point in the line segment joining A and B, right? So, in the interval joining A and B, maybe this point here, well, that point will also be lower than this line, right? So, every point here in this region, right? So, every value in that region is lower than the line itself, right? So, the line segment joining A and B, um, f of A and f of B. Uh, and so you can generally use any lambda the, as you vary lambda you know you are traveling from a to b um, if lambda is 0 so then this is uh, b if lambda is 1 it is a and lambda as you change lambda you move from a to b and then the functions value is always strictly less i mean less than or equal to the linear interpolation okay so of course concavity also has a similar property i won't write it but then you just reverse the inequality um, now, you can extend this to multiple points as well, right? Um, so, this once you have this lambda, now we, it also is true, right? So, if I have not just two points A and B, um, if I have A1, A2, dot, 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 AK, uh, now I ask lambda 1 times A1 plus lambda 2 times A2 plus dot, 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 lambda K times AK where the lambdas will sum to 1 and they are between 0 and 1. Um, now, for concave functions, I mean, I am writing it for concave, but it is true for convex also the other way around um, and that is implied, right. So, this will be greater than or equal to um, lambda 1 times f of a 1 plus dot 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 plus lambda k times f of a k. Um, of course, we will assume that sum over lambda i is 1, i equals 1 to k. Um, and 0 less than lambda i less than or equal to 1, right. 
so essentially what uh, in, in a slightly compact notation for concave functions we are saying that f of uh, sum over k equals 1 to k lambda k a k is greater than or equal to sum over k equals 1 to k um, lambda k f of a k. So, this uh, this is just a generalized uh, definition. So, this is what is called as typically usually called as the Jensen's inequality, um, Jensen's inequality. Uh, one way to think about this is that uh, let us say you are uh, um, I mean in in if the function is from reals to reals this does not really add any any great intuition, but then if you if you imagine a function from um, let us say from r a two dimensional plane um, and if you have a concave function this is kind of telling you that your concave function will somehow go like this um, and if you take any three points. I mean, you can take any number of points. Let me explain using some a1, a2, and a3. Um, now, if you use lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, um, and then combine these as lambda 1, a1 plus lambda 2, a2 plus lambda 3, a3, then you are going to get some point in what is called as the convex hull of these three points, right? So, all the points here in this region can be obtained as some using some lambda. Like how as you varied lambda in the original one dimensional case, you moved from f of a to f of b seamlessly or a to b seamlessly. Now, here you can move around in this region uh, which is called as a convex hull of these three points by varying your lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 and maybe there is a point here uh, which is you know point 1 a 1 plus point 5 a 2 plus point 4 a 3. Of course, the, the, the coefficients should add to 1, they should be between 0 and 1 which is true here. Um, I mean the representation I might not have gotten it exactly the position correct, but then the, that is not the main point. Now, what we are saying is that well, if I try to you know linearize this curve, right. So, it is curving above the linear linearized version of this, right. So, if I look at the linearized version at this point, maybe this is at this point maybe this value is here, maybe this value is here. Now, I look at the linear version of this curve and the curve actually goes above this, this linear triangle in this case. That is what it means to say, I mean that is what basically Jensen is saying, right. So, it is saying that this happens for any set of points, you can look at its you know what is called as a convex hull which is just the set of all points of the form sum over k lambda k a k and then the function values above this, right. So, the only thing we will need for our purposes from convexity uh, is this inequality that I have put down here. And the reason why this inequality is useful for us, uh, what is the connection to all this to log likelihood of Gaussian mixture model if you are wondering, um, the connection is the following, right. So, the connection is logarithm which we are using in the likelihood function is a concave function. This is where the connection comes from, which means that it satisfies Jensen's. So, why is logarithm a concave function? So, take this as an exercise, right. So, we have put down the definition of concavity, function being concave. This is one way to define con concavity. There are equivalent definitions, but you just looking at this definition, can we prove, can you prove that logarithm is a concave function? Take this as a quick exercise um, um, as a homework problem. What we are now interested in, let us assume logarithm is a concave function, that is let us assume that fact. Now, how can we exploit this um, basically Jensen's, which is what we, we want to exploit uh, for performing maximum likelihood. And we'll see why it might make sense to do this. It it should also already you know somehow hint as to what we are trying to do, right? Um, we are thinking of a sums inside logarithms, and that was causing the problem. And now Jensen's kind of tells us that well, you can write it as combination of you know you can you can remove the sum inside the logarithm, 
inside the function. That is what Jensen's is telling us. At, of course, at a cost, this is not an equality, this is greater than or equal to, so that, that has to be somehow dealt with. But somehow this is kind of making, perhaps making life easier for us. That is the hope. And, and let us see how, how that, that actually happens.